Hello, friends. Welcome to Trivia Over Tea, the quiz show podcast where we drink tea and play trivia. I'm your host, Matthew Cook, and I'm here virtually with our guest scorekeeper, Matthew Hauser. Matthew, how are you this morning? I'm having a wonderful afternoon here on the East Coast in Williamsburg, oh, Virginia. <laughs> I am uh, doing just fine, just fine. Happy to be here, happy to be scorekeeping and ready for an amazing game. Perfect. Yes, this is your scorekeeping debut, your much anticipated scorekeeping debut. So uh, <laughs> thank you for doing that today. And uh, let's meet this week's contestants. First, we have Megan. Hello, my name is Megan. And I am drinking out of my lovely Yeti mug, some lemon ginger tea. Also, I must note that it is specifically yogi tea that I like to drink because they have really cute messages. So let me just read you my message for this morning. Please do. <laughs> Never regret your mistakes. Admire the courage it took to attempt the unknown. So that will be my philosophy for these questions today. <laughs> it's wonderful. Well, thank you for being here, Megan. And we also have Liam. Hello, everyone. Yeah, I'm Liam. Uh, and today I have my Earl Grey in a, in a Starbucks travel mug because it's the only cup I had in my cupboard. So we're going to have a good day today. <laughs> um, I'm like so excited to be on this. It's, it should be a lot of fun. Yeah, well, thank you for being here. Um, I... If, for those of you who were listening to our uh, previous episode uh, from last week, I still have my um, English breakfast tea in my Pomona College Choir 2020 mug. So there you go. Well, as with all of our regular episodes, we'll have four rounds of questions today, each with a slightly different format. And so without further ado, Matthew will explain the rules for round one. Yeah, round one is our first general knowledge round. Each contestant will answer five multiple choice questions, and correct answers are worth 10 points each. All righty, Megan, you are up first. Are you ready? Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> Wonderful. Question one. Which of the following terms refers to the speaker drivers that produce the lowest frequencies? A, woofers, B, midrange, or C, tweeters? A. That's correct. Um, as you may be able to guess, mid-range are the mid-range frequencies and the tweeters are the higher frequencies. Question two. Cordell Hull was the longest ever serving U.S. Secretary of State, serving from 1933 to 1944 under what U.S. president? A, Franklin Roosevelt, B, Dwight Eisenhower, or C, this is a trick question. The answer is both Calvin Coolidge and Herbert Hoover. Oh, my. That's a great question, and I don't know anything about presidents, so I'm just going to guess C. Uh, no, it was actually A. It was not a trick question. Uh, <laughs> yes, Franklin Roosevelt. He was uh, so Secretary of State for his first three terms. Question three. Human skin is made up of what type of cells? A, endothelial, B, epithelial, or C, pancreatic? I'm going to go with B. That's correct. The outer layer of the skin is called the oh. epidermis. Question four. In 1828, Tsar Nicholas I renamed what large Azerbaijani city Elizabeth Pole? A, Baku, B, Ganja, or C, Nikikvan? That sounded like you were speaking a completely different language. Um <laughs> Um, I'm going to guess B. That's correct. Ganja. Uh, the local populace never accepted the new name and continued to refer to the city as Ganja. The city would officially become Ganja again in 1918, only to become um, Kirovabad in 1935. When Azer Azerbaijan became independent in 1991, the original name of Ganja returned. Wow. And finally, question five. Which of the following states does not have the Northern Cardinal as its state bird? A, North Carolina, B, Virginia, or C, Delaware? Hmm. I'm going to guess C, Delaware. That's correct. The Delaware Blue Hen is the state bird. 
Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio, and West Virginia also have the Cardinal. Alrighty, Liam, are you ready for your five questions? Yes, indeed. Alrighty, here we go. Question one. What compound gives vinegar its distinct smell? A, acetic acid, B, acetone, or C, acetonitrile? I'm going to go with C. Uh, no, it's actually A, acetic acid. Um, it has a very strong smell. It's almost as if you're smelling a bottle of vinegar. Hmm. Question two. The Hanseatic League, a historical group of trading cities in Northern Europe, was led from what city in Northern Germany? A, Hamburg, B, Rostock, or C, Lübeck? I believe B? Uh, no, it's actually C, Lübeck. <laughs> yes. uh, that, that was a Mason question. My, my brother Mason <laughs> wrote that question. Yeah. Uh, he, was, he also wrote the Azerbaijan question, um, perhaps. Uh, Good question. May have guessed that. Anyway, question three. Which of the following U.S. presidents, who also served as a U.S. senator from New Hampshire, graduated from Bowdoin College? A, Millard Fillmore, B, Franklin Pierce, or C, James Buchanan? I have no idea, but I'm gonna throw a shot out there. Um, C, James Buchanan? Uh, no, it's actually Franklin Pierce. Um, he was born into a prominent New Hampshire family and he enrolled at Bowdoin in 1820 and graduated fifth in his class in 1824. Among his classmates at Bowdoin was Nathaniel Hawthorne, the author. That's so cool. Yeah. Question four, the Shop Brothers produced the earliest version of what communication method in the late 18th century? A, the telegram, B, the telegraph, or C, the telephone? B, the telegraph? That's correct. The shop version of the telegraph would quickly become a vital piece of Napoleon's conquests as it allowed him to quickly relay information back to Paris from the front lines. And finally, question five. What is the best-selling cereal in the United States? A, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, B, Frosted Flakes, or C, Cheerios? C, Cheerios? That's correct. Um, as one of our esteemed question writers wrote, despite the other two cereals on the list tasting much better, the American people disappoint us yet again. Uh, that seems a bit harsh. All I'm saying is Cheerios could use a little, you know, flavor. Deep sigh. What I wonder who that. Cheerios? Yes, uh, Ma Matthew Hauser always bringing the uh, strong yet unsolicited opinions. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like uh, the, the facts like Cheerios need just a little more going for them. They need a little, you know, the facts need a little more flavor. You know? Right, something like a little brown sugar or fruit, something, yeah, something you, to give you a reason to eat it. You better believe I bought an entire bag of sugar to uh, <laughs> spice up my oatmeal. <laughs> it's important i understand well that's the end of round one so matthew can you please give us a score update yeah um megan is at 40 points and liam is at 20 points all righty now it is time for round two so matthew can you please tell us the rules absolutely round two consists of five questions directed to each player on the same topic correct answers are worth 20 points if a player gets a question wrong, their opponent will have the chance to give the correct answer for 10 points. All righty, Megan, your category is namesakes of uh, well-known universities in the United States. Oh my. Yeah. So are you ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Question one. Leland Jr., the son of a California senator who died at the age of 15 from typhoid, was the namesake of what California university located near Palo Alto? Oh my goodness. Um, California University, okay. Located near I'm Palo Alto. 
Unfortunately, I don't have a great idea of where that is. Okay. But I'm gonna guess Loyola Marymount. No. Uh, Liam. I have no clue. <laughs> okay. Wanna take a guess? Sure. My California geography is awful, so I may very well say it's in Northern California. Who knows? Um, oh, uh, one of the, it's, I'm assuming, okay, I, I know I can't ask questions. Uh, I also would have said Loyola Marymount, low key, but I, that's no. Uh, it's one of the, I'll just throw it a state school out there, Cal State Fullerton, I don't know. No, no, this was Stanford University. Mm. Palo Alto, of course, is up in Northern California. Yeah. Question two. In 1924, Trinity College would change its name to what in order to honor the founder of one of North Carolina's most prominent tobacco companies? Oh my goodness. I really have no idea. Big um, private school in North Carolina. <laughs> I don't know anything about North Carolina. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Liam? Liam, anything? Uh, I'm, I, I, I think I know exactly which one it is, but I'm struggling with the name. It's like at the tip of my tongue. Uh, uh, North Carolina, right? North Carolina. Okay, North Carolina. Okay. Um, um, one big tobacco company. Oh my lord. I I maybe focus less on the tobacco company and think more of what's a big private university in the state of North Carolina? Big private university. Jeez, I shouldn't know this. I applied to one. Uh, I really cannot remember. I really have no idea. Okay. Uh, this is Duke University, located in Durham, Washington Duke. Uh, founded W. Duke and Sons in 1865. And the company would later merge with others in 1890 to create the American Tobacco Company. There you go. Question three. In 1875, the president of the LDS Church would deed the property of a small Provo college to a group of trustees with the express intention of converting it into what university? Can you read the question again, yeah. please? In 1875, the president of the LDS church would deed the property of a small Provo college to a group of trustees with the express intention of converting it into what university? So we Provo, get no location. Provo, Utah. Um, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> hmm. Big Mormon University in the state of Utah. I know it's the Mormon University. I can't remember the name. <laughs> Oh gosh. Oh my gosh. This is going to make me mad. I'm not going to remember it, I don't think. Okay. Liam? Is it Brigham Young University? Brigham Young, Brigham Young University. Yes, he was the president of the LDS Church in question. Question four. In 1845, the last Congress of the Republic of Texas gave permission to a Baptist minister and district judge to found what would eventually become what university in Waco, Texas? This is so bad. You know, you can tell how much I know about universities. Yeah. <laughs> I applied to like two schools, okay. <laughs> both in California. Oh, gosh. Um, I should have asked you what what university is located and um, within the bounds of Jefferson Boulevard, Exposition Boulevard, 
Vermont yeah. Avenue and Figueroa Street. Yeah, I would have gotten that one actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I don't think it's in the right location in Texas, but I'm gonna say Rice. I uh, know that's in Houston. Mm-hmm. Liam, is it Baylor? Baylor University. Yes, R um, E B Baylor was the namesake. And finally, question five. The will of Mary Lucretia contained a gift that established what Nebraska University in 1878 in honor of her late husband? Nebraska? Do you think yes, I know Nebraska. about Nebraska University? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, this one was supposed to be the, the hard right. question of the five. Right. Um, That's fair. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> you know. Um, the other ones were layups. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we tried, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I don't know Liam you gotta help you gotta help me out I mean help yourself but uh yeah Liam do you know University. it's in Omaha the University of Nebraska no Liam <laughs> University of Nebraska was no so the University of Omaha I don't know no um by the way the University of Nebraska is in Lincoln um, but uh, this is Creighton University. Uh, John A. Creighton, a brother of Edward Creighton and brother-in-law of Mary Lucretia Creighton, was responsible for directing the university through its first few years. Oh. Well, Liam, um, your topic, because you mentioned to me yesterday that you were okay with American history, um, just so happens that the date that this podcast is being released, March 16th, is the birthday of one James Madison. So, um, yeah, so you're going to get five questions about James Madison, born March 16th, 1751. So are you ready? Oh, I guess I am now. All righty. Question one. James Madison was born in Port Conway, Virginia, a small community located at the western end of what geographic feature, the uppermost of the Tidewater's three peninsulas? So, and I will say that um, I had Mason write these questions. And um, when he read me that one, I was like, Mason, nobody who, was, who did not grow up learning Virginia geography is going to know what this is called. But give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> so apologies in advance. There's you know, honestly, ones. it's a good laugh because I don't know anything about that, but okay. Um, can you reread the question for me one more time? Of course. Thank James you. Madison was born in Port Conway, Virginia, a small community located at the western end of what geographic feature, the uppermost of the Tidewater's three peninsulas? Well, let me, let me clarify for you. There are three peninsulas in the state of Virginia that are on the mainland, not the, not the eastern shore, but there are three of them. Okay. And so we're talking, we're asking, what's the name of this one? Not that I don't know no. if that's going to help you at all. I um, have no clue. My Virginia, like. <laughs> no, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Um, okay. So uh, Megan, do you happen to No. Yeah. Unfortunately not. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, this is called the Northern Neck. And the middle one is called the Middle Neck. And the Southern one is called the southern neck. So this was the northern neck. There you go. Oh, cool, actually. Yeah, bounded on the north by the Potomac River and on the south by the Rappahannock River. And then the, the middle one is between the Rappahannock and the York River. And then the southern one's between the York River and the James River. So, so that's all the fourth grade Virginia geography that you ever need to know. <laughs> I, need I to know go, being the operative term here. Yes, yeah, it is very much on a need to know basis. And this was, <laughs> the, only, this was the only way you would have needed to know that. Um, so you may, you may dump that information if you, would, if you would like. Anyway, question two. One of Madison's most well-known accomplishments is his advocation for what document that laid out the structure of the US government? Was it the Bill of Rights? No, not the Bill of Rights. Megan? The Constitution? Yeah, it's the Constitution. Don't, over, don't overthink it. Yeah, no, I... I... <laughs> yeah, no, I was like, oh my God. 
<laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's deceptively easy. Uh, yes, he's known as the father of the Constitution, in fact. Mm -hmm. Question three. As Secretary of State, Madison would oversee the 1803 sale of what French territory, which more than doubled the size of the United States? Would it be Canada? No. Megan? Well, if it doubled the size of the United States, then... At the time, because, you know, it didn't have... Right, right, yeah. Yeah. But it must be part of the United States. Yes, it is presently part of the United States. 1803. Uh, Texas? No. No, this is Louisiana, the Louisiana oh. Purchase. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow, I think I'm still with American history. Well, I mean that's okay because these these are turning out to be as difficult as uh, as Megan's questions. So you know it evens out. It evens out. No, it evens out. <laughs> these are the big questions. They're getting me. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Mason Mason wrote them, and I apologize also for having Mason write your round two questions. He doesn't. I usually write the round twos, but we were really running out of time last night. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, desperate times. Desperate measures. Exactly. <laughs> Question four. As president, Madison would lead the U.S. through the War of 1812, and one of the most famous moments of the war came when the British Army captured Washington, D.C. and burned down the White House, forcing First Lady Dolly Madison to flee with a portrait of whom? Really important person. I kind of assume Dolly Madison just, but. Uh. Was it George Washington? Yeah. Yes. Was big it really? Portrait. Yes, a big portrait of George Washington. Yes. And the, I believe the portrait is still up in the White House today. <clears throat> and finally, question five. James Madison University, a public university named in Madison's honor, is located in what independent city in Virginia's Shenandoah Valley? I should know this. I should know this. Shenandoah Valley, oh my God. If I were writing Madison's questions, I probably would have asked about his, um, his home, which of course is Montpelier. Um, I don't know if either of you have heard of that. Um, That's in Vermont, right? Montpelier, Vermont? No, no, no. Uh, oh. it's the, well, the, the city of Montpelier is the capital of Vermont, but um, his home is called Montpelier, which is in Orange County, Virginia, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. But instead, Mason chose to ask about the university. So where in Virginia? It's a university. university. <laughs> yes. I appreciate the Monday morning quarterbacking. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think we need more of that on this show. Uh, you know, I'm I'm always Mason's currently on an airplane, so mm. I can say whatever the heck I want about him and he can't do anything about it. <laughs> That's too much power. <laughs> no, truly. So much power. Okay. And the shadow of valley. <sighs> I can't, I can't be too in quite a big interview. I just, is it Fairfax? No, sadly, no. Megan? Well, you know how much I know about universities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well established, yes. Yeah, um, so no, I really don't know this one. Okay, uh, this is in Harrisonburg, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's about an hour and 45 minutes uh, west of Fairfax along Interstate 81. Ah. Yes. Well, that's the end of round two. So Matthew, can you please give us a score update? Absolutely. Uh, this round, Megan scored 10 points and Liam scored 40 points, which brings the totals for each player to Megan at 50 and Liam at 60. It's anyone's game. 
Now it is time for round three. So Matthew, can you please uh, tell us the rules? Round three is our second general knowledge round. There will be five questions for each player and correct answers are now worth 30 points. Like in round two, if a player gets a question wrong, their opponent will have the chance to give the correct answer for 15 points. Alrighty, Megan, are you ready for your five questions? I'm ready. Okay, question one. What interstate highway begins at the Canadian border with Montana and runs all the way down to San Diego, where it ends just 13 miles north of the Mexican border? Hmm. The five? No, not I-5. Liam? Could you read the question one more time? Yeah. What interstate highway begins at the Canadian border with Montana and runs all the way down to San Diego, where it ends just 13 miles north of the Mexican border. My knowledge of interstates is so bad, but I'm just gonna throw out a guess. Um, no, I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> well, just, just guess a number. Just guess, just guess a, number. a number. Okay, fine. Uh, 66. <laughs> uh, no, that's actually in Virginia. Uh, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> oh, really? Yes. Uh, uh, this is um, I-15, and it runs uh, 1,433 miles. Question two. Nof Hagalil is a city built on a hill that overlooks what city in northern Israel, the largest predominantly Arab city in the country, and the hometown of Jesus? Um. Well, Jerusalem? No, not Jerusalem. Liam, do you know? You said it's a city in the north of Israel? Oh, Sorry. his hometown, not where he was born. His hometown. Yeah, yes. Yeah, but it wasn't Jerusalem. Liam? Yes. Oh, um, I'm sorry, my brain totally... Uh, so he said it's in the city north of Israel, right? In northern Israel. Northern Israel. Um, Nazareth? Nazareth, yes. Jesus of Nazareth. Oh! Yes. Question three. What is the largest county by area in the contiguous 48 states? The largest county? Yeah. LA? Not LA County. Liam? Largest county in the United States? Mm -hmm. um, I know nothing about the size of the county. I'm just going to throw one out there. Uh, Orange County? Uh, no, it's uh, San Bernardino County, California. Really? Yes. Whoa. Um, San Bernardino County is larger than nine states and is roughly the same size <coughs> as West Virginia. Yeah. Ooh. Um, and um, San Bernardino County, talking about I-15 earlier, um, when you get on I-15 to the east of here in San Bernardino or Ontario or wherever, you are still in San Bernardino County when you hit the Nevada border. So it's, it's very, very, very big. Anyway, question four. The periodic table is organized in order of increasing what? Mm. Increasing. It, um, electrons. No, not electrons, Liam. Uh, by atomic weight. Um, no. Hmm. Yeah, no. Um, it's atomic number. Oh. Yeah. Um, the periodic table follows many trends, but the atomic number is uh, what specifically orders all of the elements on the table and tells you the number of protons in a given element's nucleus. I think the the atomic mass is the other number that's like on the box. You have like the oh, atomic number on top, and then you okay. have the the symbol, and then you have the weight or the the mass. Gotcha. I think at the bottom. Okay. I think that's what it is. Anyway, yeah, atomic number. And finally, question five. Stephen Sondheim wrote what song specifically for Glynis Johns, 
who originated the role of Desiree in A Little Night Music on Broadway. Oh no, I don't know this show. Um... But there's a really famous song from the show. I know, I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Liam? It breaks my heart to say, but I'm actually really not that great when it comes to this part of the sign of the sun on canon. But you said it's a really famous song from the musical. Yep. Okay. I want to twit. The one that's top in my head is liaisons. No. Uh, okay. no, this is this is called Send in the Clowns. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Um, and it has become one of Sondheim's most recognizable songs. Liam, are you ready for your five questions? Let's, let's do it. All right. Question one. What interstate highway provides a more direct connection between Boston and Hartford, Connecticut? Oh. Um, uh, interstate 91? No, not 91. Okay. Megan? 90? Uh, no, um, we're looking for Interstate 84. Um, yeah, because 91 goes north from Hartford to Springfield, and then um, 90 goes across from Springfield east to Boston. Uh, but then to get to Hartford, you have to get off 90 onto 84 um, to get down to Connecticut. So there you go. righty, question two. The chronological catalog of Mozart's works gives every piece a number preceded by what letter? I had to oh, throw one. Okay. I had to. Yes, that's correct. I had to throw one library class um, uh, question. <laughs> I really hope you would have gotten that one wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, the it's called the Kirchel, a Kirchel catalog, named for its creator, creator Ludwig von Kirchel. Um, examples include Don Giovanni, which has the number K527, and uh, Mozart's Requiem is K626. Question three. The Milestone Motel, the first motel in the world, was located near what city on California's central coast? Oh boy. Um... I have no idea. <laughs> I'm so new to California, it's painful. <laughs> okay. Megan? Um, Hollywood? No, or... Central Coast. Central Coast. Well, that I already guessed. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is San Luis Obispo. In... Mm. Yeah, about uh, three and a half or so hours north of here. Question four. What country holds the largest coal mine by reserves in the world? Is it Russia? No, not Russia. Megan? Can you read the question one more time? Sorry. Yeah. What country holds the largest coal mine by reserves in the world? Oh gosh. Uh. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Germany? <laughs> no, uh, it's the United States. The US is home to the largest coal mine in the world located in the Thunder Basin National Grassland in the Powder River Basin of Wyoming, with coal reserves hitting 1.7 billion pounds. Um, the, there's a coal mine in China, which I won't try to pronounce, uh, which is a close second with 1.6 billion pounds in reserves. And finally, question five. While the title of doge is traditionally associated with the leaders of the Republic of Venice, it was also used by the leaders of what other Northern Italian trading city? No. 
or in times. Could you repeat the question more time, Matthew? I think I might have. Yeah. While the title of Doge, D-O-G-E, is traditionally associated with the leaders of the Republic of Venice, it was also used by the leaders of what other northern Italian trading city? Is it Naples? Uh, no, that's in the south. Uh, oh, sorry, no, that's in southern Italian. Yeah. Italy. Megan? Oh, yeah. Don't know Florence. Uh, no, this is Genoa. Genoa. Yeah, um, and uh, if you're familiar with Verdi's opera uh, Simon Boccanegra, he is the Doge of Genoa. All right. Yes. Well, that's the end of round three. So, Matthew, can you please give us a score update? <laughs> Absolutely. This round, um, Megan scored uh, zero points and. Liam scored 45, which puts Megan at 50 points and Liam at 105. There's still plenty of points up for grabs in round four. Yeah, lots of points in round four. Well, now it is time for round four. So Matthew, can you please tell us the rules? Absolutely. Round four is our showdown. The two players will be asked to write down their answers to the same three questions. Correct answers here are worth 40 points. All righty, Megan, Liam, are you ready? Yes. I really need some points here. Okay. <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. All righty, question one. What is the only U.S. state to include a foreign flag on its own state flag? Is your guess? It was a real shot in the dark here. I'm gonna go with Florida. Okay, Liam. I went down to Kentucky. I don't know. Yeah, um, both of them not even close. Um, the answer <laughs> is Hawaii. Hawaii's state flag includes the British flag in the top left corner. The inclusion of the Union Jack of the United Kingdom is a mark of the Royal Navy's uh, historic relations with the Kingdom of Hawaii before American annexation in 1898. Question two. The state of Maryland was named for the wife of what executed British king? King Louis the Fourth. Okay, uh, Liam. You said British King, right? I did say British King. Yes. Okay. Oh. Was it King George? Uh, no, this was King Charles the First. Um, oh. Henrietta Maria was uh, married to Charles I from 1625 until his execution in 1649 when she returned home to France. And when he was executed, uh, that was the start of the uh, Commonwealth era before the restoration of the monarchy. Yeah. And finally, question three. What French composer attempted to win the Prix de Rome four times finally succeeding in 1830, which he described at length in his memoirs as a part of his struggle against the music establishment. Maybe we have 
have guesses, perhaps? French composer, 1830. Um, <laughs> Massonet. Okay, Liam. Uh, Henri Dupac. Was Hector Berlioz. Berlioz is... Oh. Typically, inventive compositions did not meet the mold that judges looked for in winners of the contest. The winners of the prize were awarded a three to five year stay in Rome to study music at the expense of the French government. Well, that's the end of the game. So Matthew, can you please give us the final score? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, no points were scored in round four. <laughs> so the score remains the same. Megan at 50 and Liam at 105. Well, Liam, you have won. Uh, do you have anything that you'd like to say? <laughs> okay, literally, great. Thank you. <laughs> these, these, these were tough questions. Um, yeah, so I apologize for that. But we had fun, right? It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Someday I'll, I'll brush up on my Jeopardy and stuff like that. And then you can have me back so I can redeem myself. Yeah, come back for redemption. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, can make, time, we can make that I'm happen. I'm back and I'm going to know the interstates. Okay, good. Yeah, look at a map first. That's important. It's a great strategy to win the show. Yeah, yeah. You can always count on an interstate highway question. In fact, I put that in the uh, contestant info um, sheet that I sent That's out. right, you did, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> People, people don't listen to me. They think they think I'm joking. Not joking. That's a no, just, I'm bad at interstates. <laughs> <laughs> oh well. Well, that's our show for this week, folks. Uh, thank you, Megan and Liam, for being on the show today, uh, as well as Matthew Hauser for being our scorekeeper, and Mason Cook for composing the music. Today's questions were written by Caitlin Fick, Lucas Hauser, Matthew Hauser, Tanner Tim, Mason Cook, and yours truly. And thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe to Trivia Over Tea on your preferred podcast platform and on YouTube. And leave us a review if you enjoyed it. Check out our Facebook and Instagram pages at Trivia Over Tea and feel free to message us there if you have any comments or suggestions regarding the show. And um, also check out uh, our Twitch feed, twitch.tv slash Trivia Over Tea for when we have future live streamed episodes. And tune in next week when we'll have two new contestants and 33 more fantastic questions. Thank you. We'll see you next week.